welcome the topic we'll be discussing in this lecture is recovery from deadlock so so far we have discussed deadlock prevention technique deadlock avoidance technique and then allowing the system to enter into the deadlock and then detecting the deadlock okay say let us assume that deadlock is detected say the system is currently in the deadlock now how to recover from the deadlock how to make the system come out of the deadlock so basically there are two ways to do this the first method is terminate some of the processes which are involved in the deadlock the first method is to terminate some of the processes which are involved in the deadlock so that there is no circular wait so if we break the circular wait obviously the system will come out of the deadlock state so that is the first method the second method is to preempt certain resources is to preempt certain resources one by one in some order okay so slowly you preempt few resources and check whether the system is still in the deadlock state or not if still some of the processes are in deadlock then then preempt more resources continue this process until none of the uh, processes are in deadlock okay so this is how deadlock can be recovered so basically there are two ways to recover from the deadlock the first method is by terminating some of the processes and the second method is by preempting certain resources okay first let us see the first method the first method is process termination so 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 how the processes can be terminated so here again one of the way to terminate the process is just abort all deadlocked processes so this is a very clear cut or very straight away method which says that uh, directly stop or abort all the deadlocked processes so obviously if you if you abort all the deadlocked processes then the system will come out of the deadlock state and none of the process will remain in deadlock state okay uh, but, but this is a solution which comes with a great expense but this is a solution which comes with a, a great expense because we don't know what is the state of each process each process how much how how long they have computed and 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 how many resources they have used okay all these things uh, are just discarded and what is their partial computations everything is discarded and the processes has to once again uh, recompute everything later when they begin after some times okay so this is the first method which says that just abort all the deadlocked processes okay. the second method is abort one process at a time until the deadlock cycle is eliminated abort one process at a time until the deadlock cycle is eliminated okay so so this method basically if you see the first method in the first method the cost is very high the 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 first method the first solution to recover from the deadlock comes with a huge cost it is it has a huge expense okay but the second method if you see the second method has 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 great overhead okay the first method has a huge expense and the second method if you see uh, it has a uh, it has a considerable overhead okay it creates lot of overhead so what kind of overhead it creates so so, so the overhead uh, basically what it creates in the sense uh, first you have to identify the process to be terminated and then and then after aborting a particular process and then after aborting a particular process once again you should run the deadlock detection algorithm once again you should run the deadlock detection algorithm uh, to check whether the system is in the uh, deadlock state or not so like that 
like, like that after aborting every process the deadlock algorithm has been invoked to detect whether 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 there are some of the processes are still in deadlocked state or not okay so this uh, so this is the overhead uh, which is experienced uh, or incurred by the second method okay so basically these are the two ways uh, by which uh, processes can be terminated okay to recover from the deadlock the first method simply says uh, just terminate all the processes but it comes with a huge expense uh, because the processes might have already executed for a long time they might have partially computed their uh, results so now they have to give up everything and uh, all the process should restart the second method says that about one process at a time until the deadlock cycle is eliminated but this method comes with a overhead in terms of after aborting each process the deadlock uh, detection algorithm should be executed again and again uh, to find is still if there is some process or in deadlock or not okay and another thing is that aborting a process is not that easy aborting a process is not uh, that easy why why it is not that easy the reason is assume that you have a process uh, assume that you have a process uh, uh, say p1 assume that there is a process p1 okay let us consider that uh, this process is updating a file this process is updating a file and it is in the middle of updating the file it is not completely updated it is partially updated okay and it is in the middle of updating the file at this point of time if the operating system aborts this process then what will happen to the state of this file this file will become inconsistent this file will become inconsistent okay or say that there is another process p2 there is another process p2 which is which is which is printing something on the printer it is printing something on the printer okay and now the printing is not completed the printing is going on okay at this point of time if you abort then the, then what will be the state of the printer what will be the state of the printer in such cases uh, the printers should be get uh, uh, rolled back to some safe state it should be rolled back to some safe state so that when other jobs comes uh, it will be printed in a proper way okay so so these kind of issues also should be taken care while aborting a process okay so aborting a process is not uh, uh, is not a uh, just a decision to just uh, close the process okay uh, before closing currently what the process is doing and 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 also you have to ensure that uh, the process is not in uh, will not leave any resource in an inconsistent state if, uh, if if such cases are existing then we should ensure that they are in the consistent state and then only it should be aborted or it should be terminated okay and and uh, and determining and determining which process to be aborted and identifying which process to be aborted uh, is is really a policy decision okay in the first case we are aborting all the process but in the second phase, in the second case we are aborting one by one process until the deadlock cycle is el eliminated so identifying the correct process to be eliminated actually it is a policy decision it is similar to cpu scheduling algorithms like how we have discussed uh, many scheduling algorithms like fcfs round robin shortest job first all those are based on some policy some jobs uh, or some process will get the processor first okay similarly here also you are terminating the process so this terminating should also based on some policy we cannot randomly pick up a process and we cannot uh, terminate so based on some factors uh, the the process should be terminated okay so what is the factor the main factor is you should terminate uh, such a process uh, uh, you should terminate a process such a way that uh, which will which will uh, uh, the terminating that process should should result in a minimum cost okay we should abort those process whose termination will incur minimum cost if you terminate any process some cost will be incurred 
because the process is not completed so we are terminating at some cost cost may be in terms of time or in terms of the computation done so far some some loss will be there okay that cost whatever has been is going to incur it should be is going to incur it should be minimum so you have to identify such a process and then it should be terminated so these are some of the factors based on which the process can be uh, chosen for termination maybe uh, maybe you can choose a process to terminate based on the priority of the process that is identify the process with lowest priority and then terminate it okay or we can terminate a process depending on how long the process has computed and how much longer time it still required to complete okay if a process has just now entered it has just entered and it is staying in the system only for past 10 milliseconds so better that process can be terminated okay or if a process is uh, uh, is staying for a long time but still it needs some 4 5 hours to complete in that case that process can be terminated okay so like that uh, based on some factors we should decide which process should be terminated or how many resources the process is holding based on that also the termination uh, factor can be decided okay if some process is holding 10 resources then better if that process is terminated maybe uh, some other 10 process uh, will get those resources and deadlock may be solved. Okay. Uh, resources process needs to complete. How many process, how many resources the process still needs? If a process needs only one more resource to complete, uh, better let us not terminate that. If a process still needs five resources to complete, uh, that can be terminated uh, because, because it needs more resources. So, so the less resource process the process which needs less resources may complete quickly. How many process will need to be uh, terminated? That also we should identify to come out of deadlock. How many process should be terminated? Okay. Whether the process is an interactive process or a batch process. So interactive process in the sense uh, which, uh, which will keep interacting with the user. Okay. The user input uh, will, will play a a major role in the process execution. Batch processes are running in the background. Okay, so 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 it is always better to stop a batch process because uh, because it is not going to affect any user. Right. So these are some of the factors uh, based on which a correct process can be identified for termination. Right. So this is about process termination uh, to recover from the deadlock. So we are discussing about deadlock recovery. There are two ways for deadlock recovery. One is terminate some of the processes. And the second method is uh, preempt few resources. So we have under process termination, we have discussed two cases. Just the first case is either, uh, the first case is to abort all the deadlock process so that the system will come out of the deadlock state. Uh, but, but, but it incurs a, a huge cost. The second case is about one process at a time until the deadlock state is eliminated. But this comes with a huge overhead in terms of that after, after aborting each process, uh, the operating system should run the recovery algorithm to check whether still some of the process were deadlocked or not. And aborting a process is not an easy decision because the process may be in between of updating a file or printing on a printer so we have to identify the correct process to be aborted. So based on uh, several factors, we can identify like which process to be aborted, right? And the second method for, uh, for, for recovering from the deadlock is to uh, preempt certain resources, preempt certain resources. So in this case, we have to uh, select a victim, victim in the sense, which resource should be preempted. Preempt means remove a resource which is allocated to your process. So first uh, step is select a victim. That is identify a resource, a resource uh, which is to be preempted. Identify a resource which is allocated to some process that is to be uh, preempt, uh, preempted. Okay. So here also we should identify such a resource uh, which will 
which will minimize the cost. Okay, we should identify such a resource that by preempting that particular resource, uh, the cost involved will be minimum. Cost may include parameters uh, such as number of resources the, the process is holding, the amount of time the process has completed so far. So all these factors, uh, based on these factors, the cost may be decided. Okay. So we have to select a resource which is to be preempted and, and identify such a resource uh, that by preempting that resource, the cost incurred will be less. The second method is whenever you preempt a resource, whenever you, you preempt a resource, then you cannot leave the process in the same state because already the resource is allocated. So maybe the process might have did something with that resource. So we cannot uh, uh, leave the state of the process in the same level after preempting the resource. After preempting the resource, the process should be rolled back to some safe state. After preempting the resource, the process should be rolled back to some safe state. Okay. If you are unable to roll back to a safe state, then the process should be totally restarted. Then that particular process should be totally restarted. Okay. Always rolling back to the safe state may not be possible because in that case, the operating system should maintain the state of every process at regular intervals. And this involves a lot of, uh, uh, a uh, lot of data storage and maintenance from operating system side. Okay, so if a rollback to a safe state is possible, rollback. Otherwise, just restart the process from the beginning okay? after removing a resource. Okay, because after removing the resource, the the state of the process is going to change, right? And also, we should identify. Uh, and, and also we should ensure that the resource is not always picked from the, the resource for preemption is not always picked from the same process. And also we should ensure that the resource for preemption is not always picked from the same process. That is called a starvation. If that happens, if the, if the resource to be preempted uh, is being picked always from the same process, then that is called a starvation. Say, assume that there is a deadlock uh, between three process, uh, P1, P2, and P3, okay? There is a deadlock between three process. They are P1, P2, and P3. Say, P1 is holding some resource, P2 is holding some resource, P3 is holding uh, some resource. Now, assume that P operating system is picking up, uh, saying that P1 should uh, release uh, resource X. So, uh, so this uh, P1 release resource X, okay? Now, the system comes out of deadlock. Now the system comes out of deadlock. Say after some times, after X amount of time, say again there is a deadlock. And this, this time the deadlock is between P1, uh, P3 and P4. This time the deadlock is between P1, P3 and uh, P4. Now also say the operating system is uh, uh, what you call choosing P1 uh, to, to give up the resource. Now also the operating system is identifying a resource uh, some other resource R Y, and it is asking the same process P one to give up that resource. Okay, okay. So if this is repeating, say after some other time, after some more time, say again there is a deadlock between uh, P one, uh, P two, and P four. Okay. So now also to recover from the deadlock, the operating system is saying that uh, P one should uh, uh, give up the resource R or Z, or Z. Okay. So in this case, what happens in the sense, every time the same process is getting picked up uh, to release a particular resource. So this case is called a starvation. In this case, what happens? P1 will never complete. P1 will never complete because it is, it is always being asked to give up uh, the resource uh, whenever there is a deadlock happens. So, so this will lead to starvation of P1 because P1 may, may have to it is not that it will never complete. It may have to wait for a long period of time before completion. So that is called as a starvation. So to avoid from starvation, uh, we should know, uh, like uh, uh, we should know, we should not, we should have a maximum count on the uh, number of rollbacks allowed for a particular process. Okay. 
to avoid starvation to avoid starvation we should have a maximum count on the number of roll backs allowed for a particular process okay so so this can be easily done by including roll back in the cost factor so whenever you calculate cost include roll back also in the cost factor because always uh, the operating system will select a process uh, for preemption in such a way that it will reduce the cost so while calculating the cost include the number of roll backs also okay so that if a process is uh, rolled back two three times uh, then then its cost will increase so that the probability of that process getting selected for preemption will reduce right okay so this is how uh, deadlock can be recovered uh, by preempting resources right so that's it about deadlock recovery so basically there are two ways to deadlock recovery uh, one is by aborting the process or terminating the process and the other one is by preempting the uh, resources okay so that's it about the topic deadlocks okay so we have discussed what is a deadlock and uh, when when two process are said to be in a deadlock state that we have understood and we have discussed what are the various uh, methods of dealing with deadlock okay so there are basically three ways of dealing with deadlock the first method is to ensure that the system will never enter into the deadlock okay for that can be done by using two techniques by using deadlock prevention and by using deadlock avoidance deadlock prevention is done by making sure that any one of the necessary condition of the deadlock is not existing the necessary conditions for deadlock or uh, the necessary conditions for uh, uh, for for, uh, for deadlock or mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait only if all these four conditions were there then there is a deadlock if any one of the condition is not there then there is no deadlock so deadlock prevention algorithm ensures that at least one of these condition does not exist so that the system will not enter into the deadlock state okay and deadlock avoidance algorithm we have discussed two types one is if the number of uh, if the if the number of instances of each type of resource is one then we can uh, avoid deadlock by using resource allocation graph if there are more instances of resource of each type then deadlock can be avoided by using pankers algorithm okay so that's it about deadlock detec uh, detection and avoidance and then we have discussed then the second method is allow the system to enter the deadlock state allow the system to enter the deadlock and then detect the deadlock and then recover from that so that is the second case so so we have discussed how to detect deadlock so that deadlock detection algorithm is also very similar to the bankers algorithm there is no change at all only thing is here we allow the system to enter into the deadlock and we frequently run the deadlock detection algorithm to check whether there is a deadlock or not again deadlock reduction algorithm there are two types the first algorithm is for when um, will be used when there is a single instance of each type of resource and that is done by a uh, by a graph that is done by a graph that is done by a particular graph which is called as wait for graph okay wait for graph can be used for deadlock detection when there is only single instance of each type of resource is available and the deadlock detection algorithm can be used for deadlock detection when there is more than one instance of uh, each type of resources available and that algorithm is similar to that of the bankers algorithm and then we have discussed deadlock recovery how to recover from the deadlock so basically there are two ways to recover from the deadlock terminate some of the process is the first method second method is to preempt some of the resources so this is the second way of dealing with the deadlock the first way is to deal with the deadlock is don't allow the system to enter the deadlock that is by using deadlock avoidance and by using deadlock prevention the second method is allow the system to enter to the deadlock state and recover from that the third method is ignore the problem itself pretend that there is no deadlock at all okay actually most of the operating systems actually they use the third method because the system will hardly enter into a deadlock state right 
and in a in a normal uh, uh, stand alone computers the system will enter the deadlock state very rarely maybe once in a year or once in two years so uh, so it is better to ignore the deadlock because otherwise the overhead involved in maintaining the deadlock uh, detection avoidance and all these algorithm will be higher so that's it about uh, the topic deadlock so let us stop here thank you